everybody likes a good bossa nova. Don't they? I guess. Actually, now that I think about it, what's the... There's a, there's a part later in the song, I'm gonna start the stream before before that part comes on, but it's like, I, I get this very French vibe that kind of, it's not an accordion, can't explain it. Oh well, you guys will have to hear out for it. Three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream, it is the BNI stream today on this fine 11th of September 2023. I got a second guess every time I read out the date on that one, <laughs> because they don't name many things after the date they happened on. I mean, sometimes it happens, but it's like, it's usually a location or a motive or something like that, but that one's a date, so you got a second guess when you say the date. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week's been pretty alright. We've been, I've been chill. I've sort of blitzed like a bunch of really tiny games, and uh, I sort of had like a real like ache in the back of my throat, like after the last, not after the last stream specifically, but it's getting better. It's a little bit on the, the rough side right now, but uh, I hope you all don't notice that it's a little a little creaky, a little croaky. Uh, how about let's hop right into this, this game today. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I got audio, but do I have video? There it is. We're playing Rayman 2 a bit more. Now, uh, my test save, I've, uh, I've gone forward. Uh, oh, hold on, I just need a... Pff, I've made a big, big boo-boo, which is... I have not shown the chat. That is a big boo-boo on my end. There you go. No problems. Let's load a save, and let's just continue where we're going on. So, um, it's pretty much gonna be like a two-stream affair. This is the second of the streams. Uh, we've got... I've gone all the way from the beginning of the game to and including the Sanctuary of uh, Stone and Fire, aka the longest level in the game. We're up to the Echoing Caves. Uh, pretty much about, yeah, half the game done, half the game to go. Um, <laughs> we're not second guessing the frame rate this time. We're sticking with the high uh, refresh rate uh, because I'm very certain, after looking at it on PC Gaming Wiki, I'm very certain that it says that the game itself caps at 63 frames a second. So whatever I'm doing, increasing the frame rate, honestly doesn't help. But a lot of uh, character animations are kind of locked at that 30 FPS, so... Ooh, hi there. How are you doing? I wasn't expecting this guy to get right into things, but okay. I've still got my power punch, my power glove uh, from the end of the last stream. We'll see how long I keep it, but it'll show up a couple more times. Um, this uh, is the only... Oh, it's not the only time. There's, there's a couple of other times you got to hit multiple switches. Also, uh, the door is closed by four switches. Thank you, Murphy sign. Uh, keep your eyes peeled uh, for this five llama just around the corner. That's always good fun. Uh, hop down around the back. You'll find a pirate just chilling here. The power punch uh, does quick work of him. Uh, <laughs> that's why I, I'm like, how long can I keep this? Because uh, the camera is stuck on that fence. Uh, that was one of the switches, by the way. This is another switch, but it activates these platforms here. Um, but yeah, you've got two paths uh, to activate all the switches. And uh, I'll explore all of them. Um, just kind of show what's going on. Um, but yeah, they all s sort of circle back to the, uh, to the main room. Uh, but yeah, I actually, I really like the back half of this game. I feel like this game, as I've played it more and more, I've started to really appreciate all the different ideas that go into it. And uh, and I know I said at the end of, you know, well, not even just the end, but the entirety of the last stream, I was like, I think this game was very misunderstood in my eyes. I, I have appreciated it more and more as I've gone along. Uh, I love this scene. This room gives me, I don't know why, this gives me a very Ratchet and Clank vibe just standing here, watching this wheel spin. Um, open this door and we're back into the main room, but there's a switch and stay on this walkway because there is another five llama. So that's all good. Be careful not to go back. You know what? You don't want to go back. Let's go up here. And we'll head over down here. But yeah, no, this game very misunderstood in my eyes. I've, I've been loving it more and more and just playing it again. I'm like, yeah, like... All this stuff really works, and I think 
yeah, the part that I didn't quite understand is, one, I played the PS2 version a fair bit, and then I was like, oh, okay, because the PS2 version does some changes that I just don't think really work out. Uh, you know, there's something nice about the brevity and the, uh, the succinctness of, uh, particularly the PC version, the N64 version shares the exact same, um, you know, design. Uh, this is, uh, what I love here. We'll grab the plum. We've already, we've already done this for, for, um, the previous level, technically in a side area, but this is a required thing now. You gotta throw the plum onto his head and that allows you to jump off his head. What a nice and fun and cool mechanic like that. Uh, I forgot to get that switch. There's a switch up there. There was a five llama there, so if you're at 20 llums, uh, you've gotten everything that's in this, the scene, so... That's all good, but yeah, I forgot to put that switch. That's that's the last switch. Did you like how you heard the music, but that was probably where the door was? It was in my left ear just for a hot second there. Uh, the rest of this, I mean, it's called the Echoing Cave, so we got to have some caves. Uh, the rest of this level takes place in some caves. Let's start off by grabbing the powder keg. And failing to hit that, that one. Uh, this level is definitely, um, also one to, you know, it shows off a mechanic that, uh, won't get used. It's just, there's no yellow lums in there, it's just there, but, uh, this mechanic I used once earlier, and it only really shows up now as well. So we'll grab some lums, we'll just hop over here, we'll hit a checkpoint, climb your way up, and grab a cage. There we go, that's got a few lums in it, but hold on. Bounce off, and we'll grab two more lumps as you head down. Is that still shaking? It's, it's, there you go. That was kind of weird. Let's continue on. I loved, like, the music just, like, kicking in for, like, a couple of seconds, and then you're off the... You know, you're off the, the ride already. Now, it's very important you end up here. This is... the only time in the entire game. The fairy guy. You, you just go back? We're in the Fairy Glade now. Notice I'm at 48 lums and 6 cages. We're back in the Fairy Glade. This is, um, there's, uh, I think it was the second scene of the level. Uh, if you remember, um, you know, there was the, the water part, and we'd climb around and watch for the piranhas, and there was, like, one lum at the end of it. Uh, this is part of that scene, and it's, uh, very slightly observable from there. Whoop, come on, come on, camera. Oh, there's a web here. It was very slightly observable from that angle. Um, I don't really know why there's that little tiny bit of backtracking. It does mean that you won't... Well, I think you can actually access the bonus level if you go back into the level and finish it. But you won't access the bonus level um, from here because, uh, well, we're not finishing this level. We're just here for a quick detour and it will magically give us the, uh, the things we need. What? What? I'm just gonna make a runner. Who needs these pedestals? What? Alright, I'm just running. Oh, he gave up. Okay. Almost back at the start. Watch out, there's a guy throwing powder kegs down at you. But don't worry, there's a little bit of a band-aid spot right there. It can break off and allow you to hop down into this little tiny hiding hideaway where there's a pirate there, so let's take him out. Nice. And there's a cage, and that's that's everything in this level. You can barely see out, but that is indeed the vine that we climbed uh, at the end of that, you know, that scene. Down into the hole, and magically you just drop back where you were. <laughs> it just happens, you know. Uh, now to actually go where you need to go for this level, uh, Distract this guy off, and this door is closed, but fortunately we've got a powder keg here. I love this powder keg mechanic. They use it enough times where it's like, it's great. You're just gonna use it for like two seconds there, just to fly up and hit that switch. Uh, no matter what you try, if you try jumping back for that, you're just not gonna be able to hit it, so. There you go. So the next scene. Guess where the cage was. Again, just, just lums there. It's 
let's keep the idea going. Now this I also love, uh, the fact that you can use the powder keg to destroy enemies, and uh, this is an opportunity where you can just fly it straight into that guy, <laughs> and uh, it'll take him out, which is very neat, very cool. Uh, this is a little secret up here, with another cage, just cash, and uh, that'll just reveal some red lums, but what you've actually got to do here is you've got to hit this switch on the outside, which will open that gate, then you've got to run around. Make sure you pick up this yellow lum, and you should be at this exact number of lums and cages. Pick up the keg, and now you can make your getaway. And there's the music again, I love it. I love this game's presentation. I've been loving it more and more as I've played it. So, it's great. It's a little bit of respite, but not enough because everything's crumbling around you. There we go. There's 50 lums. And there's the teensy cage. There he is. Hello there. And I love just the aesthetic of this ending. I love that, like, reflected moon, even though it is just all one big texture. It's a wonderful sight with the ship in the back. Oh, what a fun level. What a very fun level. And it just keeps getting better as we go along, so... Uh, but yeah. Okay, time for bonus game. <laughs> what will I talk about? Uh, I feel like this past week I've mostly been looking at, um, like, again, more people talking about Starfield. I haven't played Starfield, and I don't really have a big, like, desire to play it, like, right now. Um, but I feel like, again, we're in the same motions of Fallout 4 when it comes to, like, the, the internet feedback. Uh, Oh, oh, a, bit, a little bit, a little bit slow in there. Um, but when it comes to the internet feedback, it's like I there's a lot of people, and and like okay, ultimately, like I don't really have a you know opinion of whether Starfield should do well or whether it should fail. I don't really care. You know, it's a game; it'll do what it wants. Um, not sure what they even gave me there, but sure, okay. <laughs> Uh, to this next level, by the way, the precipice. I love this level, but some people hate it. You'll be the judge of that, but I love it for purely, it's, it's a wonderful set piece moment. Also, what is it? Your ferocity already had to do, man. You were the other tool. <laughs> nice. Just kind of happens as a cutscene, but uh, yeah, no, the, the the ship is after us, and it's effectively a big long linear trek, uh, picking up lums and uh, dodging all manners of explosions, and probably falling to my doom constantly. But I love the development of the music as it goes throughout this whole level. It starts off with this like you know kind of whimsical tune, and it keeps building up and building up. Uh, ideas and motifs. Uh, but yeah, Starfield is, um, I mean, yeah, it's actually out now. It was in quote-unquote early access out if you paid 170 Australian dollars. Uh, there's an uh, extraordinary number of people who paid for that early version, like... You know, like, it's fine, I guess. You know, 170 bucks is a lot. I'm, I'm not as comfortable on that one. But also, is buying a game for early access effectively a pre-order? It's not even really that early access. Like, I don't really... Oh. I don't really know what they can do in, like, five days for, like, optimization purposes. Like, for, for code-wise, like, stuff. Uh, um, it just kind of seems like, yeah, that's, like... This is just marketing, this is just to get people paying for a more expensive version. Uh, but, oh I oh well. Um, but yeah, no, the, the user feedback has been, you know, generally positive. Uh, I'm not going to say universally, there's definitely some people who are very upset about different parts of the game. And there's a lot of parts of the game that I can understand people get, you know, very upset about. And to be honest, like, hey, if you're paying 170 bucks for a game, 
You should, and granted, it doesn't even matter how much you're paying. Any game should be ripe for criticism. The more a game does, the more grounds you're pro or the more ways you're probably going to find things that you don't like. Uh, and as long as you, you know, balance it with a proportion, you know, with a, uh, what's the, what's the phrase? As long as you and your criticism, you know, say, hey, you know, if I liked 80% of the game, I'm generally going to make, make, you know, it publicly known that, yeah, I, I, I did like it a fair bit. Um, I don't think it's quite genuous to just completely rip into a game even when you like it and also not rip into a game when you sort of don't like it. Like, it's fine to not like things and it's fine to like things. That's ultimately, uh, you know, what it's all about at the end of the day. And, uh, it's just media. It's just entertainment. Like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not too, too important to, like, life or death that you... You must love this game, or else you are a terrible person. Like, no, it's it's fine. It's fine. Um, so uh, the criticisms uh, that I saw, I guess that some people are definitely. Um, uh, well, I guess there was a very big one about a uh, a certain. Uh, oh, dang it! The, the, the green checkpoint lump is right there. Uh, I forgot the name of the the guy. Um, but he's like bald and British, and uh, he got very upset about uh, the pronouns thing in the game. Uh, you know, wh whatever. Like, you know, if you're upset about that, that's fine. I feel like there's more to his complaints, and I did find a clip of him predicting a plot line. Um, sort of as it happened, but just like he's like I. He could just tell the plot twist, which I'm not sure if there was science or if there was just like, you know, just sort of assumes based on a uh, some yeah, I don't know some 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 fancy guesswork. Who knows? Maybe you know, it may have also been a little leaked to, to him ahead of time. We don't 100% know what's going on inside his head, but definitely I think the important thing, regardless of uh, you know, politics or whatever. I love that they give you the power punch just so you can take out that guy in like no time. And I love this like moment as well. This reminds me of um I mean doesn't the, the box art of the game sort of look like this? Don't forget this one lum that's just casually hanging off this like light part of this crane. Uh I think we should be at 25 and 5, yeah, at the end of this. And that's right. Most of the levels are three scenes from now on. Most. Not all of them. I think the one after is two scenes. Um, yeah, regardless of your opinion of whether the, uh, you know, the pronouns and the stuff exist in the game, I guess, like, the, uh, the important thing is, like, you know, he found it boring. And I think that is the most important part that every video game company should probably take in mind, is do, do people actually find the work interesting, or is it sort of bubbled up in this cultural zeitgeist of, uh, of kind of media. Like, if you were, um, you know, like, I, I know a lot of people who really wanted to play this game, and I'm like, why? And ultimately, at the end of the day, a lot of it boiled down to, well, I sort of do just like the Bethesda games. I like the way they feel and play. And without really being able to put a finger on exactly what they mean, you know, they're, they're kind of going with it. They're going with, hey, I'm going to play Starfield. I love the, the music kicking in this one bit. And this one bit used to stick out in my mind. This is the moment in the game when I was like, whoa. Because I never played like 3D games like this. Where it's like this massive scale. I love that you're descending this canyon, picking up these lums as you go. And then these, uh, these bombs just come out and attempt to ruin your day a little bit. The lums have a real big radius where they will come up and hit you, so don't worry if you're a little off. Do worry if you're very off and you actually miss one. Uh, you should be at, I've written down, 40 lums by the time that you hit the ground. But, oh, it's a wonderful sequence. Um, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to play the game because you just like Bethesda games, because I'm, I'm honestly of the, of the opinion that, like, you know, when Oblivion came out, a lot of people tried to copy Oblivion. When Skyrim came out, not as many, but some devs still tried to copy the Skyrim thing. 
Uh, we're sort of at that point where it's like, yeah, no one can emulate the Bethesda formula. You can get decently close, but you can't quite get it. Unless you're uh, Obsidian, and I sort of like the Outer Worlds. But I'm, I'm in the minority opinion on that one. Um, I don't know, some people are going to be like, what do you mean? I like the game. Uh, I feel like, I don't know, it, it's the cool thing on the internet to rip onto the Outer Worlds. I don't know how that works. Uh, at the end of this uh, section, by the way, lovely daytime. Uh, hopefully you haven't lost all your power punch because uh, you got to deal with uh, this one guy. He's got a lot of health and you're constantly getting fired at. Like this guy has a lot of health if you don't have the power punch. If you do, it's five hits. The music is real jamming as well, which is great. Other than that, that is the end of the level, but before you hit the cage, just uh, keep going around and uh, you'll uh, spot one last one last goodie. Which is uh, not one, but two, five lummers at the top of this wall. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, the um, people really, really want to play just a new Bethesda game. Um, I guess that's that's fine and right, but yeah, ultimately at the end of the day, like people sort of know they're also flawed products, and um, yeah. That being said, you know there's gonna be some some weirdos on the internet who get very defensive, and some that also get very antagonistic. They're like, oh, how dare how dare you like the popular thing? It's like it's fine, you know. People can play it. I do think there's a bizarrely disproportionate amount of praise for this game. Um, like, given the issues people are having um, with characters glitching out, with uh, being able to predict <laughs> the writing and calling it boring at times, um, I've got some friends who it's just like, yeah, like, they love Skyrim, but then they're playing this, and they're just like, yeah, like, I don't get the sci-fi. I don't get the, the, the you know, the world that doesn't really click with me. Um, but they like the combat, and they like, you know, some of the RPG mechanics. Oh. 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 <laughs> Trips again. They're getting longer and longer. 47 seconds of starting to real test my endurance on that one. Gonna keep trying my best on that. Okay. To the next level. The top of the world. This one's a fun one. I like this one. It's just the mechanics, it's just here, you know. He's a bird. <laughs> Time for the hardest boss fight in the world. The <laughs> level just starts off. The moment you start moving, he's like, oh, okay, I'm coming at you. And then, just drop him. Uh, there's no lums or really anything out on this platform, so let's go on this chair bit. Go! It just... This is just... Yeah, no, I expect you to understand this new mechanic, but effectively, the chair revolves around uh, this, I guess, light wire. Um, this is going to give lots of people motion sickness. Uh, I don't apologize at all. Uh, but yeah, you can speed up and slow down and rotate all around. Uh, Should be nine lums at this point before this door, and then I just wrote down like, oh, okay. Just gonna whack myself on that one. I peered over and then I missed the lums. So how about let's just go by observation. Go! There's 33 lums in this whole scene, and there's only two scenes in this level, so uh, fairly straightforward. But hopefully I keep my power punch because the longer you keep it, well, at least at least just to the end of the scene. good to hold on to. <clears throat> so, yeah, ultimately at the end of the day, like, I don't think we should necessarily rip on people for, like, being passionate, I guess. Uh, and, hey, you know, there's legit complaints and legit, like, feedback. And we don't want to just, you know, slander a guy or smear a guy just for expressing it, even if he's, uh, 
yelling into a camera. Because there's a certain degree of, uh, you know, maybe his criticisms are right, maybe they're wrong, who knows. A lot of character assassinations I saw, where it's just like, it's just like people would like take something out of context he said, and then try to spin it as if it was like, he meant, you know, he's being hypocritical, and it's like, no, I don't know, I don't know, like, take like his whole experiences, I don't know, maybe it's consistent, who knows. Uh, landing here, warning, intruder, catch him. We got one of these guys, I remember this guy from like Whale Bay, this time I got a power punch, so, takes off a bit of his health. Oh. Gotta bait out those hits a bit more. Oh no, he's fired the green, the green skull smoke. Poof. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but I want to know what this like sound font is. There's got to be like some electronic sound font going on. You can keep running down there, but there's nothing. Uh, nothing down there other than the more red lums. Now this is what I love. This powder cake is important for a little bit later in the level, but again, you can just bring it over and be like, ah yes, this guy. Not dealing with him <laughs> at all. And you can just defeat him in one go like that. It's, it's incredible, I love it. Uh, you want to be a little careful around here because uh, if you can jump up here, you can get this lum. I'll leave that one lum there for a moment. And there's one tiny lum there. Now you're going to want to bring a powder keg uh, for this next little bit. Wheel it around and uh... Bit of a long track, and once you're here, you can stand on this platform. If it's not here, just be patient. Uh, don't press A. Don't throw anything. You just you just gotta walk with it for a moment. It's a little bit of a puzzle bit. Like you just gotta know that like this is over here. I guess I'm saving a bunch of time. Uh, but when you open that door, this is where the deity is. He's not in a cage this time. He's just in in a walled off room. He's got a llama and another power punch, so that's all good. There's probably an official name. I keep calling it the power punch. Uh, he decides to cheat this whole section by just jumping on this tiny little ledge there. I'm telling you, you're very slow. Uh, oh. There we go. Before you end the level, there's one last guy here. Oh. Next game. Does this guy have less health than the other one? Where is he? Uh, he's got two lums in this little dead end here. We've got the TNT to walk forward a bit. Come on, TNT. It's making a run. And uh, yeah, you saw it, there's a cage, there's, there's just a bunch of lumps kind of lying about here. That's already 60 cages. It's three quarters. So, we're getting very close to the end of the game here. He's really enjoying that wall, isn't he? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Ultimately, at the end of the day, like, you all enjoy whatever with the game, but I hope that, like, internet discourse doesn't get as, like, you know, my side, their side. It's very tribal right now. It's, like, it's impossible to have, um, like, a conversation or whatever. Uh, also, some people on the internet are just, they haven't played many games, and I know that's, like, you know, like, maybe that's an understatement. Or an overstatement. I don't, I don't know, but like, there's a lot of people who are just legit impressed by it being their first game, and I guess that's, you know, hey, more power to you. But definitely, some people will then make the claim of something happening in Starfield, and then 
saying no other game does this, or the attention to detail is, like, extravagant, implying that other games don't have that attention to detail at all. I think this- is this the same path as the last level? It might be. I'm just worried about, like, how long they are at the end of the game, because I've never really bothered doing these, uh, bonus levels every single time. This is gonna be a dead keyboard by the end of the day. Rip Keychron K4, you will be missed. This is the ultimate test, by the way, for the, um, for the Yeti shock mount. Like, you're hearing the keyboard, but are you hearing, uh, <laughs> any, like, tapping or bassy noises like that? Who knows? Well, me when I edit. Here we are, the Sanctuary of Rock and Lava. We're at the next Sanctuary, and by we're at the next Sanctuary, I mean there's, uh, the second of the walk stages. It's just here. So... Uh, you would need, uh, I think I've written down 450 lums to enter this. We're at 655, so... You got a fair bit of wiggle room, but, uh... The, um, the level after this one, the level after the Sanctuary of Rock and Lava, you need 475 in order to enter, so... Um... Now, granted, you do this and the camera's just panning down, apparently. Um... You do this level and the actual level, well, there's another 100 lums there, so... Uh, probably not going to be that caught out in doing this level, um, unless you get caught up by that level, so. This one's a lot more, like, straightforward and a little bit less flashy. But it does have these lily pad bits where you just got to ride them on the water. And I love the, the way the water looks, even though it is a complete, like, flat, you know, plane with a texture moving over it. It's the fact that, like, it's, you know, it ain't blue properly, like, crystal clear. There's a lot of games where the water is very artificially blue, um, all over the place. I'm looking at you, heretic. Seriously, the water in that one is, like, hilarious. How blue it is. Whoop. Sometimes the jumps are a little tight on this one. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward follow the path. You gotta, you know, go between the, the lily pads on that one. Nearly at the end, though. Because it's one long room right here. But I do like it. It's a nice, fun little bonus level. Uh. So yeah, on the topic of, uh, yeah, people who have never played a game before, I want to mention there was one tweet. I don't think it was crazy popular, so, uh, I want to take this one as, like, you know, meeting a lot of people. Um, but it was someone going like, oh, look at how the, the shell casings, when you fire your weapon, um, the shell casings change, uh, where they fly to depending on the gravity. So they're, like, in a town and, the, you know, the gravity's normal, and then they're in, um, you know, like, space, and it's like, oh, the gravity's wild, and the, the, the shell casings go way out. And someone is just like... Quake. You, you can make the case, well, Quake didn't have shell casings, but it does- It does have a grenade launcher, and, uh... That's, that's sort of, you know, close enough on the comparison. Quake 1 has one singular level, and it's a bonus level, with low gravity. But it demonstrates the mechanic. Uh... And as much as people will say, oh, maybe it was a mod, it's... No, no, no. Not for, not for Quake 1. Um, there's, there's bound to be a bunch of other games that do that. I can certainly tell you Half-Life 2 does that. Um, again, though, there's no moment in the game exactly where there's lower gravity, but... Yeah, I guess it just depends on, like, where are you are looking and what are you looking at? Do you like how this level is, like, it, it, it's reusing that swamp aesthetic, though? I like the level design. I like, like, where this whole thing kind of takes, and especially bits like this bit. Me sneezing. Oh, that sneeze. Yeah, I do. Ah, <laughs> oh, these eyeballs! Look at them! They don't even turn! <laughs> Bouncing, they're chilling on these logs. There 
Yeah. We go this far in the level, by the way. Not a single lump. But you gotta get this cage, because this is a required cage as well. There's a purple lump in there. You need it in order to swing forward. And as much as I've been like, yeah, I've been holding on to my power punch. Uh, yeah, there's another one just there if you need it. Which really helps against uh, this pirate. Who just appears. Uh, I don't know if that last walk level, by the way, doubles the power of your punch. I think it does. I'm very certain it does. Uh, so we've got this room full of eyeballs, which I have now destroyed all the eyes. We've got five lumps in here. Very nice, very nice. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't want to rip too harsh on Rando on Twitter. Uh, obviously Twitter and most social media, it's like, really doesn't represent, you know, a lot of people. Uh, and a lot of the time things just get boosted by bot accounts anyways, so. Like, there's not like a lot of like partial viral in, in Twitter. It's either like, someone's got like, you know, maybe a couple dozen likes max. Or, uh, it, you know, it starts to get into the thousands real quick, for some reason. There's no in-between. Uh, so... Yeah, take what you see on the internet with a grain of salt. Uh, people are getting, you know, defensive and, uh, upset about the game. But honestly, I don't know, it's just a game. Uh, is the game of the year worthy? Potentially, but, uh, I still would like to remind people that Metroid Prime came out this year. And you should all be just praising that Metroid Prime came out. Uh, I think we can hit that from up here. There you go. Uh, well, I'll get that on the way back. Uh, because this is a dead-end room with a little floating plant thing? I don't really know how to characterize it, but there's a... It's got a weird tail. When you stand on it, you'll ride it out. Uh, you need a sort of time hitting these uh, spiky vines such that they recede in uh, and don't come back out while you're trying to fly past them. The camera's hard locked. I believe these lums will fly out towards you. Yeah, while you're on here. Again, love the music in this bit. Love the music in this whole game. Now, the reason why we're flying on this, uh, plant here is because, uh, it will take us down into the depths. I feel like the first game probably had tunnels that were just like this, where it's, like, filled with vines all over. It's not lava, it's just all killer vines. Watch out. The jumps here are kind of iffy, where the plant, like, you know, burns up. Also, these walls give me very Millennium Puzzle vibes. Oh, I don't think I got this, because you can't grab the edge of the plant. Yeah. Always a painful jump. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I don't talk about Starfield for another, like, umpteen years, uh, until the Game Awards and stuff. Um, there's definitely been a lot of very, like, solid titles already out. Um... And I, I mean, maybe, you know, it's... I was gonna say, are we at mid-September yet? Maybe. Maybe, there's... Yeah. There we go. There we go, so... Uh, make sure that you stay on this, uh... This, uh... Plant thing, by the way, because uh, you want to pick up these two lums. And then it's gonna awkwardly... the. the the plant's just gonna fade out right about here. So you want to make sure you hover because there's two more lums just there. And uh, if you don't get those, then you're gonna be very sad if you accidentally get the checkpoint that's just down here. There we go. The music constantly developing. Uh, but yeah, no, I totally, I mean, you know, does a game need a Game of the Year award in order for you to like it? No, it doesn't. But it, it, it you know, it would be kind of cool and nice for, uh, more people to play Metroid Prime in my eyes. That game is absolutely excellent, and, uh, the Switch version is a very, very faithful version. Um, I love this, uh, just 
pouring lava onto the bridge, onto the spinning platform, and you just gotta wait until this bar is over it, and then there you go. Smooth sailing. Couple of lums up this climbing wall. Make sure you grab that cage. I I I swear those like shots were just like waiting for me to see the cage, but yeah. And you'll need to jump on this platform, which is totally not hot after doing that. I assume it's made out of the same material that they uh, make on the hull of spaceships. Is it carbon fiber? It's not carbon fiber, is it? No. No, because it's like... Carbon fiber isn't quite, like, the sturdiest material out there. Uh, this is a bit of a cursed part of the game, where there goes my, uh, my thing. But yeah, you got these guys constantly terrorizing you. And then you got like this thing. I'm just gonna give it two hits and the. Uh, nope. Nope. Come on. There you go. Uh, this is the cage that gets a lot of people because they'll see the cage, don't quite know how to get to it. This is a whole hidden, like, just bit you can climb right here. And that'll let you get to the. get to the, the lums in the cage. Um. That one's just a very, very obnoxious one to, to spot, let me tell you that. Uh, we'll wait for this platform to sequence. Uh, also, for some odd reason, I just want to say, when you land after this platform here, Rayman always just says, yeah, for some reason. I, I'm not quite sure what exactly you just did that very second, given that you're in the middle of the sequence. You're not at the end of the level yet. You're close, but you're not there yet. Almost there, almost there. And here we go. Into this little tunnel. And we did it! We're at the end of the Sanctuary of Rock and Lava. It honestly wasn't that bad. You know? You can rebound off to hit that. I'll show up a couple of times rebounding. You may be thinking. It was a sanctuary level and you didn't have a boss. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll address that in, in, a, in a few seconds. In a minute and a bit, but... Alright, time to kill the keyboard. Here we go. Uh, but yeah, I think a lot of people like... Uh, like a... Uh, well, I like Metroid Prime, but I think a lot of people are probably going to say it's a big toss-up between Zelda and um, Boulder Escape right now. Uh, the Dead Space remake has a lot of love, uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake has a fair bit of love, uh, at least the critics really like that one. Um, what's another one? Someone's gonna yell at me for, like, not remembering another one. Armored Core? That was a pretty recent one. Yeah, this is mostly the same bonus game again. Oh, I just wish the ferry was, like, right there and not, like, another, like, eight seconds later. Am I getting better or am I getting worse? I think I'm getting worse. Oh, well. That's right, beneath the Sanctuary of Rock and Lava, there's more Sanctuary of Rock and Lava action. Um, this level, yeah, this level requires a, a check of 475 lums. Uh, this is the second last lum check in the game, so, uh... You don't need too many more lums, but you do need a fair bit more lums. Although, I, actually, given how many lums I've got, you're fine. You don't need any more than what I've got. Uh, this is, I think, the same cutscene, though. The exact same cutscene of being able to discover a new world, and I think you're just going to witness that once more, one more time. Yeah. I don't know, there's been a lot of, like, fairly good games that have come out this year. Um, so yeah, we'll see by the end of the year. Um, have any of them been console exclusives except for Zelda and Tears of the Kingdom? I can't think of a single game that's on... I mean, one, there's there's no games that are on the Xbox and not on PC. I can't think of any that have been on the PS5 and not on... Uh, yeah. I can't think of any others, really.
But, uh, mm. yeah. This level starts off in a fairly interesting way. Oh, uh, Final Fantasy 16. That one's critically people liked it. Hogwarts Legacy? Yeah, sure. Pikmin 4? There you go. Pizza Tower. There you go. Pizza Tower deserves it all. Good old Rayman with the good news first, by the way. Oh yeah, Street Fighter 6. I don't want to throw that one out. Um... But yeah, look at this. We got a brand new power. Yeah. Rayman. So you can now fly with your helicopter. The bad news is that your mission gets harder. Here's some advice. Use your helicopter power to fly. Just activate the helicopter and keep A press down. Press control to move around. It'll be much easier. This is something that blew my mind as a kid. The idea of constantly getting these new powers and I don't know why I thought it was only this level but really when you think about it the entire game is all about getting new powers uh, but yeah this whole level revolves around being able to fly around and hold A you can just keep going up and down usually when you tap A after hovering you know you stop hovering in this level nah you just go up so uh, this little uh, this little path I'm taking is a little secret route. They'll nab your cage here. With, uh, three lumps. Also 68. <laughs> We're getting dangerously close to uh, the end of all the, the cages in this game. Love the music in this level again. I'm, I'm loving the music in every level. But yeah, one thing that you know, really made me go, hey, 3D games are awesome. This game, I think, you know, the more I think about it is, like, this gave me my love for 3D games, because this whole section is just all freeform 3D navigation. You're constantly moving yourself up and down, you know, steering around in 3D space. It's cool. Uh... I'm just trying to make sure I don't like miss anything. I'm very certain uh, five ones is good. There should be a six one coming up in a short moment. Um, again, I just oh, I just want to note the uh, the music dynamically kicking in. There's a certain room uh, in, in a little bit, and I just love how just on the beat. They'll put in this, like, wow, check out this place kind of music, you know? Yeah, here it is. And it's just this entire room flooding with lava. And it just kicks off, you know? <laughs> We're back to normal room, normal stuff. I love it. Uh, but yeah, this whole idea of like these fan-based, uh, you know, hallways, uh, they'll show up, uh, well, it shows up one, one other time in this level. Uh, yes, there is a cage there. Make sure you get this cage. Funny number cages, baby! Should be at 15 and 2, just before you continue on. Oh my gosh, that's what it is. There's one five llama just there hiding at the ceiling. Uh, so just like in the last level when you'd rebound to fire up, this one to rebound to fire down. Very nice, very cool. We got another fan hallway. Um, but yeah, I like that, uh... What is this? Anyone... It was helicopter? You, if you know what I mean, like there's like flash games and stuff called helicopter, and it's just you hold, you know, one button, you go up, and you let go, and you go down, and you try to dodge the top and bottom of the the tunnel you're in. Um, I don't know if that's like an older arcade game that people just recreate in Flash, or whether it's actually a thing from the Flash days. Like that's where it's from. Dodging up and over to get all the the lums. Well, this one's important. You'll spot. <laughs> this is probably the least 
you know, hidden secret in the world, but make sure that you're leaning up and left for this one lump, and then keep going all the way to the side, and there you go. If you can end up in here, not one, but two cages next to each other. So, uh, the joys of number 70 on its own are very short-lived. Alright. Now, I think it's best practice to get back in via the right here. Because, uh, you've now got to go down and right fairly aggressively just to get that one lum. And then two last five lummers. There's one. And there's the last one. There we go. This level is much shorter than, than maybe I was expecting. Maybe some other levels are a bit shorter. We enter this one area. Rayman has a look around. Only to realize <laughs> he doesn't have very good peripheral vision. His eyes cover so much of his head and he still doesn't notice. They get slapped in the face. Uh, slap so hard, you lose the ability to fly for the rest of the game. Technically, yeah, you can come back to this level and fly, but yeah. This is Fouch, the Guardian. And holy crap, they actually made an actual boss fight. Um, so uh, you gotta crash bandicoot it up by running away from the screen. Or toward the screen, I guess. Uh, Now of all the boss fights, I definitely thought of this one a fair bit. Make sure you time it right, go up, get the stalactite on him. He'll take three hits. And uh, you got to make sure that you don't fall into the lava, like that. Otherwise you got to start it again. See, I didn't even take a hit from the past two boss fights, and here am I, having to start it all over again. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's been lots of good games this year, so... Uh... Oh, I'd like to give an update on the, um... On the the, the, the... the Home Lab NAS, and that is, uh... Thank you, Guy... Uh, from... Was it Silicon Center? He posts on Ozbargain. Um, he's actually got a new deal right now, with uh, selling 14 terabyte hard drives. He's, uh... He's uh, gotten my drives back and uh, or the two that are broken, and he's like, yeah, no, I'll get them replaced. Um, might take a, a bit, because I think he's got to order them in. Uh, them in. Oops. Uh, but good on him for, one, the very quick responses, um, and uh, two, for handling it, because, uh, you know, he's a smaller seller, you know. Sometimes you never know what you're, what you're dealing with, but no, he's, he's doing all right. He's doing way quicker responses than first party Seagate, uh -huh. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you gotta watch out as well if he jumps for that one. When I was doing my tests, I did this level twice. No problems. It's only when you're on camera. That's the classic... We used to always call it the Let's Play Curse. It's just like, you play so much more differently, like, when you're on camera. Not even, like, if you shut up. If you're, like... You know, I focus on uh, just playing, and I don't. I'm not saying anything, and you'll still, you know, for some reason, fail because it's on camera. So, uh, so yeah, but no, the the NAS has actually been going pretty alright. I've gotten some some fairly good rate, uh, read and write speeds. I would like to test it a little bit more um, because it's at like 280 megabytes according to Windows. Explorer when I transfer a file. Um, I'm not too sure what 280 megabytes exactly, like, is. Maybe that's the... Maybe that's just the write speed. Maybe I should test the read speeds a bit. Because the write speed should be the same speed as the write performance on one drive. Um, or my network, but it's probably not my network. Because, uh, two and a half gigabits is a little bit faster than that. There we go, first try. When you take him out, for some reason, he turns into a purple lum. And then, uh, for some reason, one of your shots will latch onto it. There it is. Use this to swing up. I love this room, by the way. Just, again, buckets of lava all over. Uh, drop down the center. Yeah, 
And uh, <laughs> Rayman knows the drill. We've got another mask. I used to be always creeped out by this one. Think about it, Majora's Mask came out the year after this game. So, uh, I want to know, what, like, what was going on inside their, uh, their heads when they said, mm, yes, masks. Ah, it's like, congratulations, you found the third mask. Just one more mask and the miracle will come true. Thank you, my man. Oh. And, and he just he just sends you on your way. Like you know exactly what's going on. You don't need you don't need more mask, more explanation. Gosh, how many levels have I done? Is this five or six levels already? Oh my! Oh my nose! All right. Oh, I gotta itch my nose. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Um, but yeah, I'd love to give it a, a, a bit of test. Uh, there's one thing that I'm currently in the market for, and that's, um, uh, complete, like, system back. That is a lot shorter than before. I will accept the shorter ones. Uh, I'm looking into, like, cons complete, like, system backup, so, uh, I'm currently tossing between Backblaze and, uh, there's another one. Crash point? I think crash point. I think I might lean towards crash point just because the UX is quite nice. I guess it's like you're not really using it that often, but uh, I think also backblaze doesn't really do backing up of a uh, NAS drives very easily. Or yeah, NAS storage very easily. If you like that bird fun, I'll be coming for you. It's very peeved off. So welcome to the Tomb of the Ancients, otherwise known as, uh, the obligatory horror level. Although, have we had... Have we had some spooky caves before, but... Can you hit this checkpoint before the... That'd be kind of funny if you could. Uh, I'll have a sign as well. Clark was captured here before being brought to the technical checkup. Ooh. This is the hardest cage in the world. If you don't see this cage, uh, okay. There's a switch here. Oh, I don't have my power punch. This is gonna be interesting because, uh... Love the psycho, like, string sting going on there. It's incredible, I love it. And then you think you're fine. One, you got these ghost chickens all coming around. Uh, there's this whole large pit in the center. I love that they just use like tombstones as like the floor. <laughs> Dude, games in the 90s, just hilarious what kinds of things could be the textures. You can see there's a big spider. He, he knows, he's dancing, he's vibing. There's even these like tiny ones. Uh, but this whole um, area hinges on um, knocking three switches. This is the first one, uh, but this will raise um, one of three platforms. You're gonna need to raise all three platforms in order to exit this section of the, or this, this scene, basically. Uh, and, uh, all the platforms are basically just more forward. Uh, there's actually no more lums in this scene as well, so... Which is really weird, it's just the, those ten. Um, I hate that, or keep hitting the, uh... Might as well just ignore them. I keep hitting the, uh, the arm there. We'll just wing it. Run from the spider, you know, as you do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I'm amazed at, like, how, you know, there's, like, cloud storage, you know, like, er everyone's got, like, OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox was sort of one of the, one of the earlier ones when it came to that. Um, there's also, like, more, you know, cloud provider forms of block storage. I know Backblaze has their own form of storage, and they, they advertise it's a lot cheaper than Amazon S3, or um, I think Google Cloud Platform has uh, one. Uh, I guess the, there's different use cases, and in my case, it's like, this is, this is like backup, and then just at, at you know, at some point much later, 
you know, recover. But, like, it's not going to be constant access. It's not something I'm going to be sharing with anyone. Uh, I don't really mind if it takes a bit to, to get the files. It's just, you know, cold storage, that thing, you know. It's going to be a rainy day when I want those files. And uh, I'd just love to be able to you know, grab them back at some point. And that's where, um, yeah, uh, Crash Point and uh, Backblaze, that's where they're going at. Where it's like you just pay, you know, monthly. And you just have this, like, infinite pool of storage that you just keep syncing to. They do sort of, you know, railroad you into using software that will sync stuff. Uh, you can't just fudge what your files are or upload arbitrary files. Um, but it is sort of that, like, peace of mind of just, like, yeah, like, computers on this, we're handling that, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, once you're up the top, don't go in here, this ends the scene. We have, ladies and gentlemen, we have one. I, I love this, like, hole up here. It's incredible. I think it's supposed to be the moon. But it sort of looks like a hole. Um, but we have the most bizarre secret in the entire game. If you go down around here, your clever eye will know there's an actual platform <laughs> back here. This is the most obscure secret in the whole game. So if you never knew this existed, uh, congrats. Here you go. Drop down in here and we've got, uh, Two enemies here, uh, just charge up some shots. If only I had the power punch still, this would be great, but... Just take him out, and uh, the first platform will raise in front of you. And then two more guys will appear. Uh, you're basically going to take out three waves of... Uh, well, three pairs of enemies. Yeah, you could do it by, like, tapping them like this. Probably not the worst doing it like that as well. Now, I want you to keep a- keep a close ear out. Um, because, uh... Oh, I just want to double check as well. I have 815 of the 999 lums. When you pick this up... Made a fancy noise, and uh, it doesn't show up here. But I wish it did. This is the mystical thousandth lum. Uh, I think other versions of the game it will indeed kick in. This is this would up your your lum count. Maybe I gotta commit to the end of the level. We'll double check. Um, but for some odd reason, when Razor Beard ate a lum, uh, it just sort of popped up here. I'm not really too sure why, but you know, I'll accept it. Uh, but yeah, what a nice little fun little secret there. You know, it's just, it's just there. This whole level involves, uh, you know, going on these, like, swampy platforms. This poopy water with, you know, decomposing fish bones and ribs all floating about in it. It's a very grim vibe. Tomb zones everywhere. This is the real Halloween level. I like this guy as well, because he's got a very low, like, kind of cooldown going on. Maybe it's not that low. But it's like you're gonna fight him basically by jumping. So got more corridor to go. Yeah, this scene's definitely a bit of the longer one, so... A, a, a bit of one... It's, it's one of the long ones. It's not a bit of the long one. It is a long one. Alright, this platform just that tad bit more. Um yeah. And uh we've got three lums. And you can clearly see there's an exit up there, but uh don't be tempted by that just yet. We don't really have to take out that guy. Uh oh. You don't really have to ride that as well, but th that will be a purple one that puts itself in a place that allows you to swing back. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, yeah, if you go through this tube, you're gonna miss a cage. So, you don't want to miss the cage. Head up here. This is an alternate route. This will eventually link back to immediately after that pirate. Uh, but it is this whole separate, you know, area here. There's a power punch, which I will 
promptly avoid because I know I'm going to take more hits before it's really useful. Um, but I love this like wide open area that you know you can go down. Uh, there's nothing up around here. There's lums up there, red lums. Work your way around a bit more, and uh, there's a cage. Very nice. Stand on this lower ledge so you can hit it, and there's two five lummers in there. And another pirate, why not? Yeah, like a lot of lums are, are just, and those cages are just in this side cut. I, I don't know how to really phrase it. There's more to this level than some people would have would have uh, experienced. Also, lots of these ghost chickens. I hope you appreciate moving forward like five centimeters a pop. I do like how they stop at some point. Like, it just despawns as well. Very nice. Very, very nice. Technically, the water's going the wrong way right here, but uh, I'll accept it. These ones have eyes. Now you can see that purple lum. That's our uh, stopgap target. If you keep riding this platform, it'll go all the way until you know the end of the section here. See, as a kid, I used to hate like spooky rooms and spooky things. Nowadays, I'm like you know, fun, unnerving atmosphere. Uh, jump around here, and you'll find yet another cage with more lums. And some very long swings to get all the way back to... we beat the platform as well. Right? Uh, thought you'd like a spider, why not? I sort of want one that's this big and has a bunch of googly eyes on his top. And uh, yeah, you can just jump your way back down. <laughs> you don't have to deal with them. Uh, and we got this fun bit where uh, you'll hit the button and a timer will count down until the, the electric gate comes back on so you gotta make sure you don't hit it right away you just wait for wait for what you're hitting Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, as a kid I used to, yeah, really hate these, uh, these spooky levels. I think there's more games with spooky levels, and like, oh, I hate swamps, I hate stuff. But it's like, I don't know, I've warmed up to it over time. I like this part as well, where this, uh, pirate's throwing kegs at you. And, uh, you just gotta, you know, keep hopping back and forth. You can take him out. He can't be taken out, but you don't really save a lot of time, and... Also, you're riding a platform, it's not like you save any time. His health never showed up though, which was quite odd. Uh, hope you're hearing that swinging. We got another, another cage on our hands. Climb up here. And, uh... Oh, we're in another fight with a pirate. Quick, do the age-old strat. Oh dang, he's too strong. Takes two of them. I still love. You could legitimately fight that guy, and he does take a fair bit of a beating. Open this, and uh, yeah. you can technically continue on without having to open this, but this gives you another two five lumbers right there. Ooh. Ooh. So, that's all the lums. Climb your way up to the top, and then immediately drop down. Level design. <laughs> Yeah, the technical checkup. We finally found it. Oh, there he is, just chilling again. He seems to have a habit of just chilling every time we come across him. Which is two times, but... <laughs> that expression is amazing. I love this angle, by the way. The fact that he's got this, like, very fun angle at the top here. 
And I love that this, like, you get control. You get control of Rayman while the camera is up in that booth. You, I love that. That's such a fun way to start the fight. So Clark starts swinging at you like, you know, like it's crazy. You gotta hit all three of, uh... Oh, don't, get, don't get grabbed. I'll smack you. This red laser doesn't exist, by the way. Oh my gosh, he's, he's having a fun time with me. Uh, this red laser doesn't exist, it's just a guide. Um, but uh, while you have all three switches on, uh, he'll trip over this blue laser. Also, you'll trip over the blue laser. I'm not having a fun time charging up a hit, so... Come on, oh, oh. Dang it. <laughs> there you go, a good charge hit does the job. Uh, oh, there's holes in his back. <laughs> Apparently, that's all mind control is. Just a little, little circuit board in your back. I mean, freeing him is all good and fun, but you literally need him just to be able to hit this one cage up here. Uh, there's a teensy. And that's the end of the level. That's, uh... We're very nearly done with this game. We've just got, a. Uh, Three levels to go, basically. And then just magical, this portal appears out of nowhere, man. No platform, no nothing. Oh, I'm gonna miss doing these bonus levels. I don't miss doing it right now. Alright, so how long is this bonus level? Well, we'll find out in a bit. Uh, oh, since the last stream, I guess, as well, uh, I talked about those AMD graphics cards. They hadn't come out yet, but there were, like, leaks of the performance. Um, a little bit better than I was expecting in terms of performance, but generally, I guess, like, you know, it's a little bit of a, a naming refresh. The, six, the 7800 XT really does perform about the same as the 6800 XT. Oh boy, I think this is one of the longer ones. I don't recognize this path he's taking. He's, he's chasing him up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Actually a minute. Actually a whole minute of keyboard tapping. I hope you all love that. Thank you, game. Thank you. What did they do? They gave me my power punch back. Nice, very nice. Thank you, game. Now we got the Iron Mountains. This is the final check. You'll need 550 lums in order to enter this level. Uh, and yeah, every time I do, um, uh, you know, like a, a speedy run of this game, it's like, this is, well, actually I think the last one, the 475 lums, is sort of a bit of a check. I don't know, even after like two more levels, getting another hundred lums in those two levels is a bit of a stretch. Now you could do the walk of life and the walk of power, but you're doing a speedrun. You sort of don't want to do those levels because, you know, they don't progress the game. If you can pick up those lums in less of a time than it takes you to do the entirety of that level, you might as well do the lums and that is sort of what you want. Um, so I've got like some soft targets of like how many lums I really do need, but yeah, in general. Uh, some levels, all the lums are really along the way, and sometimes they're not. But at this point in the speedrun, who cares? I don't need any more. I like this whole area at the side here, we got this wonderful rain effect. And it's very like moody, you know, just... part here. You know, loose lums, sure. 
Uh, I would also like to warn you all that inside this building is actual seizure. Uh, partially because the frame rate is so high, and partially because it's just cool. And I like it. Oh, look at that glorious seizure right there. There's another six lumps right here. This room, I'd always struggle in hitting the switches on the walls. I just keep going, and eventually you'll just give me, like, hit it. Oh, I, I, I hit one there. It's just this one platform that's spinning as well. It's, oh. That's what I get. Come on. I'm not having a fun time hitting that switch, apparently. Come on. somehow have the camera the other way, I guess. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I've done it again. Who needs the power punch when I'm just jumping off this platform right here? I hit that one fine. Gosh, this is just like the, um, the, the thing I said earlier. The Let's Play Curse. You do it, you try to do it on camera, and it's like, nah, it ain't happening. I do know I've always struggled with this one, but like, I don't recall having this much trouble. Come on. Come on, game. Come on. There you go. First try. I had to just see it in action. There we go. And suddenly you just drop down onto green grassy fields. Completely different skybox. Completely different decor because it's not raining. Uh, with the power punch, uh, that enemy and the very next one, uh, no issues. Then it's sort of pointless because they have a power punch directly after afterwards, but... There you go. Another tunnel, another bit. And, uh... Watch out for this guy, he's throwing barrels at you. I think you can sort of wing him from this, like, hallway, because another enemy pops out at you. Somewhere. There he is. They definitely go ham with the pirates coming at you in this level, though, because, uh... Oh. Not even in this whole level, but just the scene, really? Because there's no other opportunity for there to be, like, this many pirates. This is sort of the end of, you know, when you're going to be fighting this many pirates in one go. Okay, climb up these boxes, so, which are very, you know, precariously placed. And you'll see a cage there. It's got five lums. Very nice. Or three lums, sorry. And one there. progress a little further. I do like the scale of these levels as well, so... Uh, I shall ignore this guy. Or will I? If he fires high enough. No, I'm good. Uh, this is just above, you know, that bit here, but I love, you know, the look of the... What is this? Rain droplets? Down this waterfall. Might as well just fire all the shots you can. There's that music again. Uh, but yeah. Two cages. 19 lums. That means they're all good. And down the river. Down the river we go. Uh, to one of my favorite parts of this game. This balloon. I love this massive river skybox back here as well. Uh, but land in the balloon and Rayman is very happy.
You then have this cutscene of the balloon flying through the air. Majestic. Soaring. Incredible. And then Rayman is just like... <laughs> Here's my stop, see ya. <laughs> Rayman assumes the balloon acts like a bus. And now we have this really fun sequence. I used to toy around with, like, this area for so much. Try to, like, understand its ins and outs, even though it's fairly straightforward. We've got this outdoor bits with this giant metal robot chicken. Uh, you'll see every time he sort of jumps on the ground, he'll bounce up this box. You can use that to jump in and slide in here. Uh, inside we've got this robot, and I don't know, I sort of always kind of... Oh, come on, come on. Sometimes I can bait him, and sometimes I can't. Guess I didn't need to in this case. <laughs> There's a five lummy here, and that is indeed the 80th cage. Your health is now wonderfully maximum. Gotta read the sign. Reformation, <laughs> reformatory for disturbing children. I guess they are. Ah. Uh, but you can see there's another box over there, and it's still privy to the guy, uh, jumping on it. And now we have a walking shell. Now, I used to- Oh my gosh, 100 viewers for 5.5 .5 Wow. I don't- I don't really need them. Now, you want to sort of- oh. I'm gonna lose my power punch on this one, I'll tell you that. He did say, have a good stream. So, you know, I'll give him that. Uh, but yeah, what you want to do is, uh... Since, uh, you know, gravity is a bit all over the place with the shell, you can sort of edge your way around to the roof. And it sort of seems like I'm glitching it out. Like, isn't there another way to get to the roof? Uh... Maybe. But as you work your... Oh, as you... Oh, 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 I'm going. I'm, I'm going straight, straight to the bottom. That's what I get. For, for talking over it. Uh, two of the corners have five lummers on them. So, uh, you want to be up here. There you go. I don't appear as close as I'd expect, I guess. Uh, yep. Grab the two five llamas and then, uh, figure out a very fun way to get down. Yeah, I guess that sort of works. No, it doesn't. Yes, no, yes, yes, it did. Sweet. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, if you keep going forward, you'll eventually rotate down to there. Uh, there's two switches over here. Also, these, uh, baby glow boxes getting lasered. Absolutely lasered. Uh... Look both the switches and they'll open the doors so they can make their getaway. The great escape, if you will. Uh, now what you want to do is, uh, you want to let this robot chicken guy follow you and knock over these like grain seed things. Each one has a yellow- oh. I botched- oh, have I? I didn't. I'm- I've, I've redeemed it. <laughs> I've redeemed. Each one of these has a yellow lump under it, so... I did not redeem. <laughs> that would have been very impressive if I managed to get that one. Well, okay, now you see what it looks like normally. Uh, so, they've got the arrows. But I sort of do want you to toy around with this, you know? But yeah, if you follow it around, it's like, oh, oh. You just follow the arrows and you, you should do a Yui there. Also, do not, <laughs> do not pay attention to the Zed fighting going on with a lot of the things in this game. I wonder if it's a DG Voodoo thing, because I don't remember it happening too much as a kid, but maybe it did. Once you've gotten 39 lums, uh, what you want to do is you want to jump here, and then do a boost and a jump there. And, uh, well, the shell dies, but you don't, so... Into the final part of this level, which is a very different nighttime part. I guess it was night time at the very beginning. Uh, what you want to do here is you want to jump over to where this, uh, yellow lum is, which will give you a purple plum. Throw the plum up here, try to catch it back before it rolls back down. 
throw the plum back up. And you can see there's a five llama up there. And you need this plum in order to be able to do the bounce jump onto that. You don't actually need the plum in order to continue on as well, so it's just there just for that. Swing over here, up onto this ledge, and there's the last bit of lum in the level. Now I remember the PS2 version, like, this sequence was all over the place. It didn't, it really wanted to extend this latter part of the game. And maybe, maybe they sort of, you know, had grander ideas and they really wanted to shove them in and that's what the PS2 version was sort of accomplishing, but... I don't quite know, I feel like this works fine on its own. Oh my gosh, she's, she's going. She's going. My babies! Plural, plural babies, multiple babies. It's horrible, the pirates have taken all of my babies! They've imprisoned them in cages and in the mines! My darling Globox tried to stop them, but the pirates have captured him too! And they've taken him to their prison ship! <laughs> Rayman's expression there. Fortunately, Rayman just goes, Oh, why are you sitting right next to a ship? So, uh, that's right, we have child mining camps. What a wonderful thing to have in my Rayman game. Uh, but yeah, this is the section. We ride the pirate ship. We fly on the pirate ship. And it's very neat and very cool. If only here for a moment, but still. Travel past each of the four mines and you'll pick up all the babies in that mine. There was a lot of babies. Very happy to get on board as well. Now, this area effectively is like a, uh, well, the, uh, it's just a four-way intersection, like a plus shape. Um, we sort of got some turns over here as we come up from the south mine. Uh, but once you enter here, this is basically, yeah, a four-way intersection. So all we gotta do is just travel left four times, right? Well, traveling west here, so imagine we've come up from the south. Uh, traveling west actually loops back around to the north side of the intersection. So, we'll, so we're now past the west mine. Uh, so that actually means that you only have to go left once more, and then you got to do a Yui and go left again once you back out. You'll know what I mean. If you follow, if you follow this, it'll be all right. But. Um, yeah, curious level design. You sort of have to just be paying attention in 3D. Uh, the ship takes damage by touching basically everything. The walls, these metal pipes. It's going to start smoking uh, no matter how many cages you've gotten, which could have been all of them by this point. Um, you know, this thing's only got so many hits, so... And you do have to do it all without dying. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like this fun little sequence. If I do wish there was more of it, I feel like they've definitely put in the effort to, you know, make some of these mechanics in this game. And I sort of do wish that there was more to some of it. Like this flying pirate ship part, it only appears here. Flying in a level only appears in that one bit. Riding a plum doesn't really happen very often. It sort of shows up just briefly in other bits. Uh... Slides, yeah, slides happen, I guess. Um, the walking shell, yeah, I mean, we had it one more time there. I think that's the last of the walking shell parts as well. And here we are, final, the east mine. You gotta make your way back as well. I remember as a kid, it's like, oh, I got an all four, how come I still gotta, I still gotta do it, you know, go back. I used to complain a lot as a kid. I don't know if you could tell. So hopefully they made this area wide enough for you to do, like... Full 180 without touching the walls. It's... It's tight. Maybe don't hit down like I was. Just hold left. I think that makes it a bit easier. Because I keep, like, pitching myself up, and then it's like... I don't know, you just ascend when you turn. But you can't go, like, too far down, right? Oh, maybe you can. Okay, don't go too far down. 
Uh, this intersection's a little wonky, so trust me. Trust me when uh, going forward is actually the way to go here. The posts on both sides should be the big tell. Nearly at the end. Oh. I love the wooden sounds of the boat. It's just like, oh, very visceral. Very wonderful sound. And you can go, pew, pew, pew. Like all good boats. Doesn't your boat have this? Yeah, no, I've definitely been enjoying this game a lot. And I would highly recommend, you know, if you haven't played it, please play this one. It's on it's on good old games. I hope that other consoles have a version available somewhat. Um, definitely on the PlayStation, I believe, you'd probably be able to grab the PS2 version. Um, it would be amazing if that Nintendo 64 version showed up on the Nintendo 64 online. Maybe. We're still juggling. We're still juggling all the all the fun games there. Oh my gosh, my baby! One singular baby. We rescued like hundreds of them. Or at least according to this cutscene, at least like six. Thank you. And then casually, this one baby is like. Argh just ate this whole mask. Uh, but yeah, no, this, uh, this is just the fourth mask. We didn't really, uh, we didn't really have to do another sanctuary. It's just, it's just here. Oh my gosh, you could, you could spot the aliasing on that texture. That must be a rendering thing. That must be like a, like a graphics driver just interprets the texture wrong for some reason. Because I swear that used to never happen and now I've spotted so many, like, older games doing it. Someone, someone please run this on, like, a voodoo and tell me if it does that. But yeah, we brought it back. Uh, yeah, on the PS2 version, um, that sequence came, like, there was, like, a couple of extra bits they tacked on between, you know, that scene and now. Uh, or that scene and, and I guess where I'm about to get to. Um, and so, instead of the, the, the baby glow box giving you the fourth mask, he gives you a rain mask, and you're expected to backtrack through different levels in order to, uh, in order to get extra lumps. It's just some bizarre backtracking they've given you. So, uh, yeah, basically, um, you know, he can defeat all the pirates on the Earth, but he can't attack them on the pirate ship, because that's in the air. So, he's gonna give me all of his strength, he's gonna handle all the pirates on the ground, and it's up to me to finish the fight, basically. Very, very fancy. Also, you gotta find him. Also, his elbows. His elbows. Ew. I don't trust teleporters at all. If if we actually invented teleporters, I'd probably I don't know, man. I'd I'd throw my toast into it first, try to try to figure out if it legit works. I don't know. I don't feel very, you know, uh, very safe throwing anything living through a teleporter. Isn't there like a like a fear where it's like, uh, it's like a. You know, oh, it doesn't actually teleport you, it just clones you on the other side, so technically it kills you, but like, you know, there's an exact replica of you at that point in time on the other side, so to everyone else, it doesn't matter, but technically it's like, no, we we technically created some life and killed the existing, <laughs> the existing version. Something like that, I don't know. It's a bit terrifying. Uh, so with that, we are up to the final level, the prison ship. Uh, they've dumped all 94 remaining lums into this one level. There's no more, uh, there's no more uh, cages to go, but yep, this is a, a huge trek just to grab all the remaining lums. Also, Rayman poisoning your life? I've got the antidote, equipped with the latest power booster. 
Nothing can stop it. You can control it yourself, or put it in self-pilot. It can kill, crush, destroy, torture, pull ears. Its legs are programmed to squash fleeing victims. In short, it does everything, except the dishes. Don't forget the name of this marvel. The Cave of Badger- I mean the Krogoth. Decide quickly, I have other clients waiting. I think I could destroy Raymond, crush him, smash him. Do the dishes, I'll take it. You won't regret it. Use your money, it's all there. Count it if you like. Oh, I trust you. Just, just bajillion dollars. Anyway, we're in. This level is a slide level. Uh, at least for two scenes. It's actually a four scene level, so nice. Uh, but you are gonna miss lums, and if you do, just literally bail. Touch anything, just, just bail. Uh, there are 21 lums in this first scene, so make sure you grab all of them. I don't think there's a single checkpoint in either of these as well. Um, the scene itself is a checkpoint. But yeah, you're gonna see me, like, struggle sometimes, because the sliding is a little tricky to get right. I was doing it well last stream, but this stream, I don't know, man. This is where all my health goes. But yeah, oh, I love this, like, sliding part. Um, have I mentioned Rayman M? Otherwise known in the US release as Rayman Arena. They made a, um... If I had to classify it, it'd be like an Unreal Tournament style game. Um, based around the Rayman 2, you know, set pieces, the, you know, parts of the game. And the pirate ship certainly showed up a couple of times in that. It's a really bizarre game. Maybe I'll show it off at some point later on. Um, it's not exactly one I would, like, guarantee a full playthrough, but definitely one that's, like, a very curious one to mention. Uh, there is a PS1 port, but it's like a back port, so it's like how much of the PS2 game can we implement in the PS1? And it's a, it's a little shoddy, uh, a little, you know, much to be desired. There you go, 21, down we go, to the next scene. This one's got switches involved, you want to make sure you get the switches. Uh, there are no lums that I won't see. It's just making sure that you do grab them, because, yeah. Also, I love that they're blowing up all these planks, but... Yeah, there's no... I don't think there's really any ramps. Oh, that, that one lump always gets me. Down I go, down into the depths. Uh, but yeah, I don't think... I don't think a lot of people are particularly... Maybe the 100% speedrunners. They're the only people who are very good at, like, actually consistently doing this like task recorders and stuff because uh, everyone else including any other speedrunner doesn't care at this point because you don't need lums from this point on oh so close you don't need lums from this point on in the game because you've already you know passed all the checks you see how that one lum is just all the way out there it's like ugh. I'm, I'm never gonna get any both of those i love these like spinning like platforms those just things that kill you everywhere. I love the aesthetic of the pirate ship as well. It's like, you know, we've still got all these, like, wooden slopes, but you start seeing all these, like, weird, like, metal walls around you. Like, there's a weird sense of machinery and scale to it all. Like, the ship is like, you know, you don't particularly see it a ton from the outside. You see it in those cutscenes, but then it's just, you know, oh, there's, it goes, you go in the ship, I guess. But it's like, nah, man. The inner workings of this, like, you know, bizarre ship and the whole thing is intended to kill you. What? No! No! Because you can't, you can't go back up as well. I'll take another crack. Um, I'm just getting the, the ones in front of me. Uh, I am not getting anything here. I will activate that, though. No, I won't. I will miss it. Again, yeah, no checkpoints. It's it's a decent stretch until the checkpoints. Uh, the goal is there are 64 lums, and uh, this might be the point in the stream. Some people might yell at me if I don't get this right. There's a handful of lums right at the end, all surrounding like a like a like a sink basically. There's a there's, there's a hole in the center, 
and you're gravitating towards that hole and there's a couple of lums all around the outside and it's like yeah if you don't get those lums good luck Uh, there's no lums between these two jumps as well, so don't worry about me I'm trying to get that one. There we go. Okay, so first of all, lean right. You don't want to tap the ledge there. Oh, oh, oh! Hey, there we go. This is a bit of a doozy if you if you miss any of those, because it's not like you can really bail. Did you like that picture in the loading screen? I thought that was pretty, you know, interesting there. Uh, but yeah, we've got this nice little control panel area we're in, but the, you know, the thing's zapping. That must mean that it, there's a switch that's unplugged, obviously. Uh, I'll grab that lum on the way back up, but instead, let's grab this one lum down here. Uh, there is a power punch, which is probably not useful uh, any time afterwards. So let's grab it down. Uh, this one pirate certainly means business. Ooh, that was a fun hit. Did you like that one? Uh, we've got a switch over here. We still gotta deal with the pirate. Yeah, it takes a number of hits, but not the worst. When you get that power punch, you're going for it, so. Uh, on your way back up, hop off onto uh, this thing, and you can actually climb the underneath of this platform here and ride very close to the spikes uh, but trust me you're not touching the spikes and we got another five llama there there we go let's grab this one llama here and with that switch activated uh, that has powered uh, this thing up here where it's a shell that's right, but this isn't just any ordinary walking shell. These are fancy metal shells. Uh, a flying shell, if you will. These things fly around, and you can just casually control, you know, your roll. Uh, turning left and right sort of rolls you with the yaw. Uh, so you're going to have to get used to it. This is a acquired taste. This used to just throw me off so hard. I'd get to this part, and I'd be like, oh my goodness. There's like so much you gotta learn here. Um, but it's not too bad. You just gotta remember, hold down control when you wanna just, you know, reorient yourself. Uh, and then, make sure you got that. We're at 79, that's good. Into the last scene of the level, which is all just a flying, you know, flying shell part. Uh, I'm gonna try my best to stay oriented up so that you can sort of tell where everything is. Cause this does get a bit confusing, especially if you're, you know, the viewer understanding how this whole thing works when, you know, the player is rolling all over the place. It's very tricky. Oh. But I am going to make you sick right now. Sorry. Uh, okay. Time to do a loop. What? <laughs> there we go. I love these, like, just bars all over the place as well. And I love this like outdoors bit. This is what I mean by the scale. Because you can fly out and you can sort of see like, you know, that's, well, sort of. I don't really render the whole ship. This is an optional little corridor that's up here as well, signified by those uh, red lums. Uh, you'll go through this whole water bit and then you've just got to like, you know, scooch in here, scooch past the lamps, roll around the wall, roll through the tube. As a kid, I'd not have at I, I I just did not have the dexterity to follow this at all. Um, if you follow this corridor all the way though, you'll grab you know a bunch of red lumps. Red lumps though. The yellow lumps are nowhere to be seen, and it literally exits you like just back to pretty much where you entered here. So, whoop, whoop. Don't worry about the lasers. It's fine. Whoop. Through this tube and grab the five llama and you're good that is indeed 
the very, very last lum in the game. We are at... I, where'd my cages go? Why am I at 77 all of a sudden? Game's bought. So here we are, the actual final level, the crow's nest. Come in, you beautiful scrub. Man, and it's the farm has an end on the chip. You found me again. I want you good night. Let's see how well you swim in molten lava. Meanwhile, I'll just handle this little problem myself. Prepare the go kart. I know how the children they meant to me. Very ominous. Very, very brooding atmosphere here. And I love this, like, tiny little bit at the top. That's the crow's nest. That's where it's at. Apparently, to bait Rayman, you just gotta hang hang a fella off the edge of the into the building. And then, uh, yep, there he goes. <laughs> Bro, he's accepted his fate. There he is. That was easy. <laughs> I, 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 I love that he's just chilling there. It's just going, so. Anyway, uh, let's get into it for the final fight of the game. But before I get into the final fight, I'm going to hold F1 because we have every single Lum in the game. Uh, so... Let's read out the lore that happens with this, with, um, you know, when, as you pick up all the lums. So, yellow lums are the thousand fragments of the heart of the world, broken by the pirates. They contain universal knowledge. The more you gather, the more you will learn. You can access the secrets of the world by pressing F1. That's what I'm reading right now. First, you must know that the universe is made of energy. Everything that moves around you, everything that lives and thinks, is given life by the tiny magical lights, which we call lums. There are four types of lums. The most important ones are the yellow lums. There are 1,000 of them. The yellow lums give knowledge to those who gather them and can also open doors into unknown places. The red lums are full of vital energy. They can prolong your life. Pirates love them. Destroy them and you can take all the red lums which they have stolen for yourself. Purple lums assure the cohesion of the world. Without them, nothing would be solid or visible. With your magic fists, you can jump through the air and grab them one after another. Blue lums contain the first breath. They are the origin of all life. Each creature receives a birth... Uh, a birth his blue... At birth, sorry. His blue lums and keeps them until the day they die. Mm. One day the lums focus their energy into thought and their consciousness brought to life a strange and marvelous creature, Pollocus. His power is such that his smallest dream or desire becomes reality. Pollocus decided to use his powers to bring people to the world. He began with the magical beings and, dream and dreamed up the fairies. They are his emissaries. After the first four lums, they made the silver lums, which give you your special powers. Pollocus then created the Teensies. Their role is to unveil all the roads in the world. They know every secret passage and can lead you to the Hall of Doors where all paths eventually come together. Next, he created the simpler creatures, the people. First came Clark. His incredible strength proved very useful in carving the landscape, to fold hills into the mo uh, monotonous plains and to deviate the two impetuous rivers. After came the adorable Globox and his family. Aren't they cute? The wise sages don't know what Pollocus had in mind when creating them, but he truly used his sense of humor for inspiration. Pollocus finished his creative efforts by conceiving a multitude of fantastic creatures like Murphy, the flying uh, one-volume encyclopedia, or the horrible Aeg, who spends his time getting drunk on strange brews fermented in the depths of the marshes. Unfortunately, Pollocus couldn't control all of his creations. His nightmares and negative thoughts gave birth to their own peculiar beasts, so be careful not to melt up... <laughs> No, sorry, not to meet up with them and avoid any nightmares you might meet in your journeys. After having created all the creatures who live in this world, a harder task remained, creating time. So Pollocus went to the place where all the gods of the world meet, and together they set, up, uh, they set about dreaming up the future. 
To be warned of any problems that might occur, Policus sent magic masks to the four corners of the world. Before leaving, he explained to the fairies that reuniting all four masks would be, uh, would be all it would take to bring him back. Since he didn't want to be called back by just anybody, Policus created fierce guardians to protect the masks, giving them all hidden weaknesses that only a true warrior could discover and use. The period immediately following Policus's departure was a time of wonder. The people learned to speak and love nature. A wind of freedom blew through all their souls. Everything was in harmony until the, the pirates landed. As you know, the pirates broke the heart of the world into pieces. They want to make us all slaves and keep all the riches to themselves. They are soulless monsters, good at only one thing, stealing our dreams that they will never share. You must wake Policus. Only he can help you defeat the pirates, so unite the four masks as quickly as you can. Otherwise, the world as we know it will be forever doomed to bathe in pain and suffering. You must have become very wise in your own, uh, in your own way. The time has come to reveal to you a mystery for which no sage can find the answer. This mystery is you. No one knows from whence you came, nor who your parents were. Of all the inhabitants here... You are the only one whom Policus did not dream. You are the only one to receive powers from the fairies. Some see you as the chosen one of all the gods. Who knows? That is a fun story that gradually develops and suddenly becomes this bizarre mythos. I feel like as like if you've never gotten all the lums in this game, this whole like mystical plot is incredible. But enough about mystical plot, you've got to defeat the boss. Uh, he'll fire three bombs at you and then jump. Uh, you want to sort of make sure that the bombs are going to go straight at him. Only one of them needs to count. Then he's going to fire his feet, because that's the most practical place to fire. And then it sort of jumps near you, but you can just walk away. It's gonna surely take its time though. Also, you like how, uh. It's, uh technically, I haven't left the level yet, right? I've still got 94 lums. It's just this level. Uh, yeah, the power punch doesn't come to handy at all. So, after three hits, like all good bosses. Now, what got you? It takes a massive leap. And then, uh, <laughs> nice. Uh-oh. Then Rayman starts falling for a couple of, you know, I fell for hours. Uh, Lee senses the distress. And, uh, decides to help. What has she been doing this whole game? Who knows? I guess she's been... Harvesting the silver lumps again, casually giving them to you. But what exactly is Rayman? We'll never know. And uh, perhaps they'll never explain it, but I can guarantee there's uh, the sense of mysticism in this uh, magical world. It's not really as magical in the third game, I'll tell you that. It's a bit more comic. Are these shells created by the pirates? I guess they are, they've got the symbol on them. Oh my gosh, ahead! Bravo, Rayman, you were sensational! Razor Beard is nearly beaten. The nearly part is probably the important part. Thanks to you, hope has come back into our hearts. The slaves have broken their chains and escaped. On land, Policus eliminated all the Robo Pirates. Destroy Razorbeard, and our victory will be complete. Here we go. Just Rayman sitting there like, oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's still around. He's still around. So here comes the final fight. Uh, he's casually chilling by two, uh... Two bits here. You want a 180, and you'll spot that there's this glowy thing here. This glowy thing gives you the ability to shoot five times. Five shots is more than enough. 
you want to hit both of his hands. He'll slip and slide into the lava where he'll start taking damage. Hold on to your shots because if you've got five of them, you know, you can, you know, reduce the number of times you have to go down these tunnels. He'll say have fun and start firing stuff after you, but, uh... I also, the annoying part, and this is the part that really got to me as a kid, also, you sort of want to keep wiggling around because those things are going to chase you for a very, very long time. Um, the one thing that always got to me as a kid, I'm going to use that last shot there. I believe the, the spark, the thing you want to pick up, keeps changing which corridor it's in. Um, as a kid, I used to be terrible at driving this, I swear. Uh, his hand is still... Uh, you know, even when he jumps, it's still, you know, on fire, so... How many times does he go into the lava? I think, is it, like, nine? It's a pretty high amount. I think after so many hits, he will raise the lava. And he hasn't done it yet, so... Nice. Too bad the final boss music is just, you know, the boss music. But I love this room. I love this, like, you know... This lava is cool. This game is probably, <laughs> while I'm at it as well, we're on the final boss, so I, I can say this. This game is probably the reason why I love lava. Actually, I don't think I should be going for that. I don't think you should go for that while he's there. I think you should wait for him to come back up because he's going to do his lava thing. No, no lava thing. Maybe I'll do it on the way out. Oh, oh he is. He's doing the lava thing now. Okay, uh, yeah, he, um, he casually makes some lava rise and gets about to the height of the tunnels. It's not too high. Uh, you don't want to hit his hands, I think, while he's up here, right? Actually, no, yeah, yeah, you do. You do. He'll slip and he'll really slip. He's going all the way down. And then touch the lava. Very nice. Really not having a good time here, so but yeah, fun final boss. If a little bit, uh, you know, what does this have to do with the rest of the game? This flying shell bot was literally invented in the last level. You know what? I'm all for it. It's cool. I love it. Oops. Oops. Did I did I botch it up because I can't fire at him? Maybe. Is he gonna make the lava go down? There it is. Whoop. Whoop. Oh, it's in the other tunnel. Dang it. <laughs> no, I wanna get the I wanna get the thing. <laughs> Dang it. I'm prolonging the inevitable. It's a bit weird that there's no ceiling here. You're on a flying shell. Now, you could make someone hurl by constantly doing this. Or this. Fortunately, I'm not going to do that. I'm very kind. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Okay. That is a lot of banging noises. System. Okay, I've got it. Now I'm going to get out. Here we go. He just jumped a bunch, didn't he? Okay. Ah, I'm slipping. There it goes. But yeah, no, overall, I've been really enjoying playing this game again. And I I hope that, like, by playing it again and hopefully doing it a lot more justice than I did 13 years ago, um, I hope this uh, inspires you to play the game or uh, share your fun experiences of, you know, what a... You know, <laughs> did you play this game as a kid or any other game that really does... Um, you know, hold up so well to the, to the test of time. He's got one little surprise, that's right. The machine just blows up. And he zooms off into uh, what supposedly was the ceiling.
The wall box is still on the end of that building, but uh, but uh, the process, by the way, he's just gone. He's out of there as well. And then everyone is sad because uh, Rayman, who they don't know where he's from, uh, totally did perish in that explosion. And all that remains was a lowly shoe. I like how my power, my power fists have been holding on through these cutscenes. He's had the golden gloves for a bit. That's probably a sign you can tell who's recorded which, uh, which cutscenes when, uh, you know, who's got the power gloves and who doesn't. There you go. Everyone's happy that Rayman somehow survived that. And, uh, there we go! Have some fireworks go off. You know, congratulate, you know, Rayman, we honor you this evening. Without your courage, the enemy would still be here. Once again, the world has found harmony. The heart of the world is back together. Rest, you may have to fight again. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? What a what a fantastical way to say, yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be villains, it's gonna be whatever. Um and then whoosh The best player, it was me the whole time. Uh but yeah, no, this game is great. I I love the yeah. Like, okay, if I have to gush, one, the music is actually really incredible, and I love the way that, like, it just keeps playing around with that theme. It's so great and, and playful and has all these different vibes and great melodies all over the place. Uh, visually, the presentation's really on point. I love how wonky all the all the, um, the models and textures are, and it sort of holds up in this fun way where it's like, it doesn't need to be hugely highly, you know, the models aren't particularly high resolution, but the textures are really well done for what they are and they got this fun style this fun like shape to it all uh and i think that's what makes this whole game really stand out none of the effects are particularly like you know you've never seen them before but it's just this whole this whole combination this whole puts together in this one wonderfully fun way uh, presentation wise and I love like how every level does something different and honestly me as an adult I go yeah what was me as a kid thinking especially because like as a kid I could get up to the final boss of this game no sweat uh, revolution I don't know why I got very angry about when I was 14 who knows um, but yeah like I just love you know the like all these different ideas all these different concepts and it really makes every level stand out and i want to replay at different levels and you know experiment with different you know like all the the fun little mechanics there and all the fun little secrets of course collecting all the lums is definitely a task of itself but once you know they're there it's like this fun little reward that you've got going on um and the game you know writes that fun line between not being like too easy and not being too hard i i especially love i didn't get to show it off at all in this in these two streams, but the fact that when you die, you just go back to the beginning of the map. You don't go back to the, you know, no continues, no what it's just, just beginning of the map, who cares? You know, why waste your time? It's great. So, absolute, absolutely enjoying this, you know, enjoyed this game so much. Um, yeah, there's different versions of the game. The Nintendo 64 version is virtually the same as the PC version, but the Dreamcast version is a little bit more visually enhanced i think it is mostly if not entirely the same game but i think it is it does, it does have a different map screen i don't know why it's different um it's got some uh other mini games associated in it so it's a little bit more of a game but not really too different 
Uh, the PS1 version is a fairly stripped down version of the game, but it does have a thing where if you collect everything in the game, you get uh, an unreleased prototype of what Rayman 2 was going to be, which was a direct sequel to Rayman 1. Um, it is very odd how it just runs in the game, but it, it's there, it works, sure. Um, obviously, I think we'll all safely agree this is a wonderful 3D conversion, and when people... There was, this was at a period where people, where lots of games didn't do the graceful 3D conversion. Um, Bubsy happened, obvious, you know, notoriously. Um, Earthworm Jim was another one where I was like, that was hideous. Um, Mario was a lucky one that got out of it. Um, are we looping the credits as well? I haven't been paying attention. I, I, <laughs> we'll just keep it going for a bit. Um... Uh, I'm trying to think, what's another, like, 3D game that, like, didn't transition from 2D very well? My brain wants to say Contra. Was Contra? Did Contra ever try 3D? I don't think it ever did. Mega Man. We'll say Mega Man. How about that? And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of things that, like, it just doesn't get. But this, it's like, it's just jump, hover, and punch. And having a lock-on button is, you know, like, that makes so much sense. Metroid was like, holy crap, we could do the same thing, and would you know, that one works too. Um, so, I think this game is very underrated, or underspoken about. People don't talk about Rayman 2 enough, and I think, you know, people should go back and really, really, you know, soak in this game, because, you know, it's a bit of a once-of-a-lifetime, like, shot, and... That, that's, that's probably hyping up a bit too much. It's great. It's super solid. And there's not many things that are really, like, that rough about it. It holds up really well. Um, so, yeah. I mentioned the PS2 version. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's been released on other things. Let me just double check as well. Lots of people in these credits. Uh... Oh, yeah, sorry. How could I mention... How could I forget? This game was released... There's a Game Boy Color version. That's a very interesting release. I like how they came out after the PS2 version. And then, yeah, notoriously, Rayman 2 was a not-launch title, but very close to the launch of the DS, released as Rayman DS. But it's virtually the PS1 version of the game. Uh, I think, um... Let me try and see. I think the Rayman wiki has uh, RaymanPC.com. I think they have a great like write-up of uh, the differences of the versions. Um, here we go. Uh, yeah, PC version's got a uh, high resolution and frame rate. Yep, Dreamcast version is most of the same. Oh yeah, Dreamcast version has 16 by 9 as well, for some reason. Um, there's also more pirates. That's curious. Um, also, there's a cutscene where Rayman frees the prisoners. It's in every other version, but it's not in the PC version. It just wasn't there in time. Uh, PlayStation version is very stripped down. It's been re-released on other consoles. Yep. Uh, PS2 version is a whole can of worms. Also released on other consoles. Uh, the DS version is a direct port of the Nintendo 64 version. Except it has more bugs than what were on the, the, the thing. Oh, they, yeah, these credits are definitely looping. Oh well. Um, there's an iOS version, which for some reason is a port of the Dreamcast version. Oh no! We hit the end of the credits. Wow, I sat through that whole thing. Do you think this ever ends? Or I'm just being lured into the void? <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the iOS version is a port of the Dreamcast version, uh, but you can't get it anymore. You think license? Maybe it's like porting to new iOS. Maybe that's a problem. Uh, and then finally, there's a 3DS version, which was a launch title called Rayman 3D. Again, don't be, don't be uh, thrown off. Rayman 3D is still Rayman 2. Oh, there's the, the end. It's fading in very slowly, very very slowly. They really want me to go. Yep, that is indeed the end. I'm being lured in, I'm being sucked in. Whoa. They really want me to experience that. Uh, the, th 
the 3DS version is a port of the Dreamcast version again. Uh, also, I think... Uh, yeah, the minigames are removed in both the iOS and the 3DS version. So, they're in the Dreamcast version, but then they're not in the ports. Um, also, uh, for some odd reason, the 3DS version uh, has, does not have that thousandth lum. Uh, well, the PS1 version doesn't either, but, um... Actually, ooh, Does the PS1 version have it? The PS1 version only has 800 lums, so the whole story is all over the place. I think we're good there. Let me just hit escape and we're done there. Um, but yeah, that is indeed the end of the game. Uh, I can load the game and we're back in and suddenly I have still 999. Still 999. I don't know why it puts me at the Echoing Caves all the time. Um, but yeah, the 3DS version, uh, what else as well? The 3DS version also has a balance thing where if you die several times, it will just remove obstacles. I don't know how that mechanic works and why they keep changing the game. Because, I don't know, I find this version is nigh perfect. And I understand maybe, you know, some very small things for the Dreamcast version, sure. Uh, I'm very certain, uh, yeah, there's no other plot there. Um, so we don't particularly have anything more to, to find. Um, other than if you if you wanted to rush for the bonus level of the, the Fairy Glade, but I don't know. You've, you've probably seen all the bonus levels. Um, so yeah, with that, I would like to thank you all so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this or the last stream or any streams, uh, you can follow on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube. Um, yeah, if you, uh, if you, um, yeah, miss any part of it, you can see the VOD on YouTube. I usually upload it shortly after, or if you're watching on YouTube, there you go. There's all the VODs. Watch all of them if you want. Um, I'll also, oh, uh, two weeks ago I also played Evacuate on stream. Uh, some people asked me, I've thrown it up on archive.org because literally no one is able to play that game. It, it just does not exist on the internet, so, uh, have fun. Hopefully copyright doesn't crack down on me, and if it does, uh, then, you know, we'll negotiate. We'll settle. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and uh, please play games you enjoy. Whatever it is, have have a good one. Enjoy. That's, that's the important part. See ya, everyone.